Dan from the Useless Crafter. So this is day three of the first five days of owning your Cricut. So day one was a general overview of design space, how to use it, the features, the tools, so that you can start designing. Day two was all the things that you need to buy, the essentials, not everything that you want to buy, but just really the things that I believe you're gonna use no matter what kind of projects you do. So that was day two, so that you could order on Amazon, on Cricut, and hopefully get it within the next few days. Today, day three, I know I'm making you do it, but you we have to download Inkscape, Font Cloud, and Font Lab Pad. So I'm gonna show you why you need those three things. They're all free, and um, it really just makes your life easier and also makes your projects look more polished. Tomorrow is the machine overview. So I'll have my machine in front of me. We'll go over how to change a blade, how to feed in your mats, things to, you know, like little things here and there. Day five, we're actually gonna do a mini project. And then after day five, you should be able to follow all of my projects and, you know, at least be able to now know where to go, what to do, what to buy, all that good stuff. So, all right, let's get started with day three. So this right here is Font Lab. And you might be wondering why the heck do I need it? But if you've noticed at all, um, in design space, when you use a cursive font, it does not connect the letters for you. So it is such a pain in the butt. It's not a big deal if you're just doing one name, a quick project, okay, fine, I'll manually move it. But if you're like me, I'm a room parent, I have 23 students in the class, there is no way I'm doing 23 names or anything like that. <laughs> or even when I'm, you know, I'm doing an order and maybe it's only for five people, but still, it's a lot of time. So what you wanna do is you wanna type in Font Lab and um, you wanna scroll all the way to the bottom, right here, this, this is free. I don't, I don't like to pay for things when I don't have to. So when you click on this, it's gonna ask you for your email. They will send you a link to your email and you will download it. Let me show you what it looks like, okay? So I already have this open. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I just um, organized all my 12 by 12 paper cardstock. <laughs> so I broke it down by browns and grays, pinks and reds, and I did these as sticker labels, okay? But this is the font that I chose, right? So it's City Streetwear, and you can see it connects everything. It's also, even if you don't use it for your cursive fonts, for your print fonts, um, it will space it better than it does in design space. I feel like in design space, it's the spacing is too big, too much. So let me show you how to change a font. So let's see, you start typing, right? So I'm gonna type in my daughter's name so you can see that. So it just is so awesome. Um, you go to file, you can do recent fonts. So these are my favorite fonts. Um, but look, you click on it, everything changes, right? Um, I can do it for another one. Um, nostalgic, so you can kind of see how fast it is, right? And let's say I'm doing a bunch of names. So Charlotte and the useless crafter i mean it's so much faster i misspelled that somehow but anyway <laughs> now you have all this what you can do is you click on this pick list save as and it saves it as a file so i'm going to do this as um font lab demo and i'm going to save it so it saves as an svg file right so save let's just leave that there for a second so that's font lab Font Lab is awesome. Now let's go into Inkscape. So type in inkscape.org or just Google Inkscape. What you wanna do is you wanna download it here. It is again free. Now Inkscape is probably very, very amazing. I mean, I know it's amazing, but I only know how to do one thing in there. <laughs> and that's to create the offset. So if you think of a name on a water bottle, it's really hard to read it when you just have one layer, right? But when you have a offset an outline it helps you read it and then if you have two outlines it just makes it so much prettier think of your cake toppers let me see if i have any layers here i don't have anything with me right at this moment but i will show you so download inkscape and i will show you what that looks like okay so let's go into inkscape now so in inkscape let's say we're gonna do charlotte okay so i'm gonna click on the text box I'm fine. Uh, you know what? Let's pick one of my um, 
Ooh, why is it not responding? Come on. Um, I want to do one of my cursive fonts. So let's look at, oh, you know what? Let's do that city streetwear one again, okay? So here I'm going to, so I select a city streetwear. I'm going to create my text box and then I'm going to type in Charlotte. Now, it's super tiny, right? So I'm going to click on my arrow over here, click on Charlotte. Make sure that it's locked. What, what it means when it's locked, and the same thing as in design space, is if I lock it and I pull it out, it's going to change both the height and the width proportionately. Um, okay, my Inkscape is acting up right now, so don't mind the fact that it's cut off right here. But if you unlock it, then if you change the length, the width will stay the same, um, vice versa. All right, so what you wanna do in here is you want to, right now this is selected, click in an empty space over here. Okay, and let me make this bigger so you can see it, okay. Um, you wanna click on your paint bucket. Can you see the paint bucket? Okay, yeah, the paint bucket, and then pick any color down here we're gonna grow or shrink. So when we're growing, we're creating that offset, okay? So let's grow by 20. Now, if you wanna shrink it and you wanna do something inside, then you would do a negative sign. But let's just focus on <laughs> making it bigger right now. So with your paint bucket, you click in the name and you see how it created that, that outline? It's just making it bigger, right? And don't mind the fact that the name is messed up. I think I need to reboot, but I don't want to reboot right now. <laughs> okay, so that created the first uh, um, the outline, right? I'm gonna click on the arrow, click in the empty white space, and click on my paint bucket again, and I'm gonna do a different color this time. I'm gonna do maybe this color. And then I'm gonna grow by 40. So now I'm gonna click on this, and you see it gave me another, another outline, okay? So now I'm gonna click on the arrow key. You wanna grab everything. Drag your mouse all over the whole name. Go to path, object to path, file, and we're gonna save as, and I'm gonna do Charlotte Offset Demo. Because I do Charlotte's name all the time. I have a ton saved. Okay, so that is Inkscape, Font Lab Pad. Now I'm gonna show you the last thing that you need, okay? The last thing you need is from Creative Fabrica. So I am an affiliate with them. What I'm showing you is free. So um, I'm not asking you to buy anything. You just have to create a free account. The reason why you want to is because you wanna go into Tools and Font Cloud, okay? So when you do that, it's gonna take you over here. I've already opened up Font Cloud. What's cool about Font Clouds is that whatever fonts that you end up downloading, and you can download them for free, some you pay for, whatever, but all your all your fonts that are not in design space, you want to keep them in Font Cloud, and here's the reason why. Um, first off is you can type in, you know, whatever word you're looking for, name, and you can see all the fonts that you have in your system. And you can decide, oh, I like Berthella, or I like DeStacy. So this is a great way to see all your fonts without having to try them out, right? Like in Design Space, you would have to click on each one and change it to see you know, which font you like. So this is cool. But what's cooler is, and I wish I had known about this from the beginning. So when I first got my uh, Cricut, it was three years ago, and in that time frame of three years. I've um, infected one laptop, one laptop died on me. You, you kind of get it, right? When you change, because your fonts, when you download them, they are specific to the device that you downloaded it on. So if I go and use my laptop right now, because I'm on my desktop, if I go and use my laptop, I might not have all the fonts that I want. But this is the cool thing about Font Cloud. If you up drop your fonts in here, then it is always in your account. You log in from any computer, and let's say I went to my friend's house and we're both crafters, and we wanted to do something. She doesn't have that font. I can just go and log in and say, oh, here's my font. This is the font you want. You click on it, and you can download it, and it would download onto that device. You don't have to remember, did I buy it? 
Did I buy it from Etsy? Did I get it from Defont? Who knows, right? You no longer have to keep track of your fonts if you do it this way. So let me show you how it works. So let's go to Defont. This is another site, this is an extra one. This is not part of my three that you need to use, but Defont is, um, has a ton of fonts. You can search um, here for things like, you know, like I've searched Super Mario before because I was doing a project there. And then you search and it will give you anything that has that in there, right? So duh, look how cool, right? Or you can search um, logos. That was something that I thought was really cool because look at all these logos that you can, you know, that you have available to you. Now let's go back and let's pick um, calligraphy, okay? Let me see if there's anything there. So I'm gonna search there and let's say you like this one, right? So you're going to click download and it's going to, let me move my face so you can see where, oops, not there, sorry. Okay, so it downloaded to here, it's a zip file. So you wanna go and show in folder so I can see it. And then here it is, so you double click on it and you're just gonna double click on it so you can install it. So here's calligraphy style, it's installing on my, on my desktop. So I'm going to get out of it because it already installed. I'm gonna move this to my desktop, okay, so that I can find it. Because you can't, you can never upload anything as a zip file. So I'm moving it to my desktop, okay, so I'm gonna go back to Font Cloud. And over here, hold on for a second. I'm gonna click Browse because I wanna drop my new calligraphy font in there, okay? So I'm gonna go to my desktop and it was calligraphy font, right? So, doo -doo -doo -doo, here it is. I'm gonna double click on it and open. So now it's going to be in here. So you could see it's coming in and where is it? Calligraphy style right here. And then also from here, let's exit out of this. Now Charlotte, it should be available or maybe it'll be available right now. So let's refresh this for a second. So this is, like I said, it is so cool. Um, I've lost so many fonts from my first laptop to my second one on top of my desktop. So this is a great way. And so you can see, I don't have a lot of fonts in here because this is something relatively new to me. I only have 93 fonts in here. I've probably over in my lifetime of owning the Cricut, probably downloaded like 300 fonts that I no longer have access to, right? Um, okay, so it didn't pop up just yet, but just imagine if I went to an, oh, it's still uploading or it's still refreshing. Um, this is great for like, like I said, if you go to a friend's house and you craft over there, but more importantly, if I decide to use my laptop right now, I did not download that one, right? And if I walk away right now, I'm not gonna remember that I have this calligraphy font, but later when I go in here and I, you know, type in Charlotte and I decide I like that font and I'm on my laptop, I don't have to remember, did I get it from Defont? Did I go to font bundles? Who cares where you got it? Because it's now available in here and you can just click download and it would now download onto my laptop. So this is awesome for, and or if you have a machine that dies, right? You don't have access to it anymore, it's okay because you can just log in, just type in, oh, I don't know what's going on right now. It's not opening. Let me go back, oh, every, okay. So I'm gonna open font cloud. Let's see if it opens up for me. Um, so now you can just log in and you'll have all your fonts and you don't have to worry about it. Oh, here's my calligraphy style right here, right? So let's type in Charlotte. And here's my calligraphy style. So let's say I like it, right? I'm on a different device right now or on a brand new device and I can just download font. So that is why this is so cool. And if you're a beginner, Start now, you'll never have to worry about your fonts, losing your fonts, it is always available. All right, let's go into Design Space really quickly. 
so I can show you why you want Font Lab Pad, okay? Sorry, this was an old a tutorial I just did. So let me get out of this one. Okay, let's go into text, right? And we can't yet use calligraphy because Whenever you download a new font, you have to close out of design space and open up design space for the new one to automatically appear. I'm not gonna close out on it because I have plenty of other fonts that we can mess with. So Hanaberry Koo is definitely a cursive font. So let me type in Charlotte. Oh, and it changed it. So let me change this over here. So look what happens, right? It's just ridiculous, okay? Let me go back to Font Lab for a second and let me change it to the same font. So it's Hanaberry Koo. So do you see how Charlotte, the two T's, it's one nice swoop on top? So that's another reason why I like using um, this is as the designer thought in their head, when it's two T's, it's one pretty loop on the top. So it, Font Lab Pad takes that into consideration and does it all for me. Here, look at the R too, right? The R has like a nice little swoop thing. That is missing from here. So now, if I didn't use Font Lab Pad, I have to manually change this. And like I said, it's not a big deal if you have just one name, but if you're doing an order of five, five bridesmaids on their cups, I don't wanna ungroup this and manually move over each one. Now some of you may have heard that you can un that you can change your letter space. So let me show you that as well. So let me do another one. I should have done that before. Okay. So let me make this one bigger. Let me change the color just so that there's a difference between the two, okay? So you could right now go to the letter space and decrease the space between the letters. And so you see they're moving closer, right? And that's okay, for, but do you see the difference between this, the distance between the C and the H? It's getting small, right? But I feel like it's smaller than the distance between the H and the A, and it's definitely smaller than the distance between the O and the T. So when you're decreasing your line space or letter space, yeah, that will work up to a certain point, but at some point in the near future, like here, my C and my H connect. My H and the A don't connect quite as well, right? Because I can see the lip of the H going up. Same thing with my R, my L doesn't quite connect. My O definitely not, right? So still you would need to ungroup it and then you would need to move this over, right? And like I said before, it's okay when I'm doing one name and I don't want to actually open up and save and upload and all that good stuff. But when you're doing a couple of words, um, like if you're doing a phrase or something, right? And then look at this, you get this dark thing right here because it's not meant to be like that. So, so you could do this and then you can grab the whole thing and you need to weld it. And I've shown this before, but I will show you again since I have your attention. I'm gonna change these to two different colors, okay? So that you can really see what happens if you don't weld it. So I'm gonna move this to the front. So let's see if we can make this bigger so you can see it better. If I don't weld this, and let me move, oh, I can't move that. Do you see my C right here? It's, oh, uh, let me change it to a different color so you can see it better. There, that's better. This C, if you don't weld it, it will cut into the letter H. And then the H will cut over the C right here. That does not look good. What you need to do is let me change it so that, let me weld it so you can see what it looks like when you weld it. When you weld it, it becomes one and the C blends into the H and so you get this one fluid piece. And you know it's fluid because the C and the H is combined to one line item. Meanwhile, all these letters are still separated. That means it's gonna cut exactly around the R, even though it's right here, it's gonna cut, I'll move, you know what, I'll change the color again. So I'll change this one to the green and I'll arrange send to the front. 
So you can see it'll cut into my R and then my R will cut off this tip of the A. So you need to, at the end, after you move, reposition everything, you need to grab all of it. Oops, sorry, I tried to grab all of it. You have to grab all of it and you need to weld it so it becomes one name and one fluid piece, okay? All right, let me show you what it looks like if you were to upload that list of names from Font Lab Pad. You would go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse, and we're going to upload, I think it was uh, Font Lab Demo, right? Um, boop, 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 boop. Here it is. So I'm gonna click on it, open, it's gonna pop up over here in Design Space, and then you can change the name here if you want to, and you can click on Save. So now it's in your upload library, okay? So you wanna click on this, and you wanna insert your image. When you insert it, look at all, I mean, it's everything that we just typed up in Font Lab Pad, but it's all connected. See, it's connected the way you want to, right? If we didn't do this, you would have to manually move everything so that your I and the N connects to the K and the S, right? So see how much faster that is if you were doing more than one name. Now let's go and upload, I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second. Let's go and upload our image from Inkscape. So let's browse and for Inkscape, it was Charlotte, right? So let's look at Charlotte Offset, and it was my demo. So here it is. Save. I'm going to click on it here to insert, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So let me move everything first because this is a lot to show you all at one time. So hold on, let me move all of this out of the way. Now remember my Inkscape needed to be rebooted, so that's why it looks like this. So don't mind this, but try to imagine in your head what it looks like. All right, so we're gonna ungroup this, okay? If you remember, if you remember, our largest offset was this pink layer, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna grab your pinks over here, hit the shift key to grab all three pink items and weld it. And see, it's gonna give you this nice offset, right? And then we're gonna do the same thing with the hot pink. We're gonna grab all that by hitting the shift key and using your mouse to grab all of it. And we're gonna weld that as well. And then we're gonna move it as soon as we can. So you can kind of see like it's creating that offset for you, right? And then this one, we're gonna weld it as well. And so you can kind of see what it would look like. So it gives you that nice offset. You can't create this offset in Design Space. Design Space does not allow you to do it. So you need to do it in Inkscape. I'm sorry, this is such a bad example, but I didn't want to reboot it right at that moment. But you can see that will give you all the layers to make it so much easier to read. Sorry, I'm looking at my desk to see if I have anything to show you. But it is so worth it. It makes every project look so much better. I promise you just download it and that's all we'll do in Inkscape. All right, so that's day three. I hope that was helpful. Um, I know it took me years before I did Inkscape. So I totally understand if you're worried. And I was so mad at my friend for not telling me about Font Lab Pad for a whole year because for a whole year, Every time I did a cursive font, I was manually moving every letter. And I was a room parent that year. So <laughs> you can just imagine how much I wanted to smack her. All right, let me know how else I can help you. If you're new, if you have questions that I haven't answered, just know we have two days left. So in those two days, we're gonna do a machine overview. So I'm actually gonna have my Cricut here and I'm gonna show you all the things. And then the last day, we're actually gonna do an offset, do a name so that you can see what it looks like cut in different materials. So you can kind of get a feel for what kind of projects you wanna do. I know I didn't know what I wanted to do when I first started. Actually, I did, I wanted to do t-shirts. I thought I was gonna be more into t-shirts. 
and I did a full like flip. I don't hardly ever do t-shirts. Um, I use a lot of paper cardstock, which I never thought I would do either. So, you know, you're gonna get a feel for things that you like and you're gonna discover new things. So it's so fun um, to have this creative outlet that we used to have when we were kids, right? But not so much as adults. So anyway, thank you so much for following. I will see you next time. Bye.